So like your finance, like your numbers tell a story, but you can't necessarily just assume that the board is going to find that story for you. Um, and on top of it, you're never going to present that entire spreadsheet to them because that's just overwhelming. So you're going to pick, obviously, the, the basics of the numbers and then have to share what you've learned. And, and your numbers are going to go through some major changes. I know some of you have talked about changing the way you're pricing. Uh, some of you are, are starting to realize maybe some of your costs are a little bit different than what you initially planned. Um, and basically, uh, what we do today is, you know, over the course of the next couple of days, is just try to get you comfortable enough so that you don't walk up here and go, and my number is blank, and my number is blank, and my number is blank, and my number is blank. And I'm done. They already could tell it if the numbers are up there. Instead, what you should be doing is presenting, you know, sharing your numbers, and then telling us what you've learned about them, what you anticipate happening, what's included with them, so on and so forth. So, um, like I said, Tom's here to work with that. Tom's excellent for this lesson. Um, being a financial advisor, he has to constantly explain numbers to people. Um, in a lot of cases, sometimes numbers that they really don't understand at all. Um, your, your benefit with a board is that usually they're pretty number savvy, but at the same rate, what you need to, you do need to make sure that you are presenting these things well because, I mean, you will have people in the audience. Like last year we had, I was 57, 68 people who, you know, registered to attend. We had a nice full house. Jacob was there, so you know, it was a pretty full house. Um, and you want to make sure that they aren't lost necessarily in your numbers as well. So um, it's not just for the board, but obviously for just people across the board. So um, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. Any questions? Otherwise, like I said, the game plan is just continue to keep working on your financial model. Keep working on revising and you know, adjusting your marketing plans. Most specifically, and I haven't done a run of this this week, um, like I did last week, but make sure that you are engaging your MVP. Make sure you're posting on social media. Make sure that you're still continuing to drive traffic. Remember, that's real dollars already spent, and you don't necessarily want to waste them. And there is a whole section of your final pitch dedicated to what you learned from your MVP. And if all you can say is, well, I have six followers because I got them in the first week. One is me, one is my business partner, one is their mom and dad, and the other one is my other is the other mom and dad, and that's all I basically got. And we only ran three ads and we generated only a little traffic, then we're gonna go, well, how how convincing is that that your business will work? So make sure that you're continuing to work on those digital elements. Um, if you're using some of the like more traditional routes, like I know you guys are very heavily leaning on feats and follies to teach you a lot, you know, just make sure that you're keeping that ball moving forward. You know, like I said, when things get stale, especially in the digital world, you fall out of the algorithm, and the moment you fall out of the algorithm, it's really hard to get back in. So you want to make sure that you're just regularly generating that content. So uh, that being said, I'm done. And I just need to turn it on. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm Tom. Um, I have been in the program since the beginning, right? Yep. So I was a mentor the first year, or two, two. I think last year I did take a little bit of time off. I just did some classroom stuff or something. Not sure. Um, I've had four kids here at South, two currently that are current students. Um, I'm not a teacher, nor do I want to be. So that will be very evident during your, during your three periods with me. Um, but I do talk a lot, and I do talk in, um, I use a lot of analogies when I talk to clients because, you know, I handle about $130 million myself, and so I need to make sure that people understand when they hand over their money that here's what we're going to do with it, here's kind of what to expect. It's no different for you guys, okay? So um, it's one thing when you first have this first idea and you're telling somebody about it. You're like, oh, I got this great idea for business. It's blah, 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 right? Everyone gets excited. Oh, that's such a great idea. I'm going to do that. This is the next part of it, of getting the person with the money to say, okay, that's a cool idea, and I think it'll work. Here's why, right? And that's really the picture that you have to print in their brain um, to really help kind of solidify the deal to get the actual backing. Because for a lot of people, some of the best ideas never get off the ground because they don't have enough money. Or they can't tell their own story. You know, we can talk about all these different people. Um, just to remind you, Elon Musk 
very high energy dude, right? Whether he's semi crazy, semi you know genius, whatever, he creates excitement. But he also has to back it up with some numbers. Okay, he's lucky he can fund his own projects for the most part, right? <laughs> so because he didn't have to convince anybody, um, you know, like Mr. Stone said, we've had a couple different times over the years where we're looking at the financial stories, and I'm like, uh, okay, let's let's let me just paint a picture. Year one is this, year two is this, year three is this. Why would I invest in this? Right? The story you're telling me is that you made no more money or even less money in the third year than you did the first year. Oh, I didn't notice that. Or you know, so that's one of those things that we kind of look at. So we're going to start first with just kind of introducing yourselves a little bit, just so I kind of get. I'll be here Monday, uh, Friday, Monday, and Wednesday. Yep. So that way I'll kind of know. And then your team name and. and Give me the not the excitement story. But tell me what your what your product is. I mean, I've read the names and stuff, but I want to kind of hear from you guys. Uh, I'm Jacob uh, with Keepsakes. We're creating a product where you plug in the LED two port under your steering wheel in your car, okay. and as you walk away or get close, it like lock or unlock your car for you. Ooh. Okay. And also have stuff like remote unlock or lock. Okay. Do you have a little more excited gear as well in your voice, which is yeah, just that early. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm intrigued by this one, by the way. He's about to choke. Okay, and catch those trucks. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's all you have. Okay. I'm Corbin, and my name is Tyler, and we're making an app that'll help people have a track, time manage, and what makes us different is that it's going to be a game, like a tree and stuff, build your ecosystem, and kind of like water your plant. Sorry. Kind of like water the plant. Kind of like water the plant. Yeah. Okay. And then you have an AI to help you out. A somewhat. Okay. That's where the forest comes in, because I was like. Uh, and then our name is Little Forest Diane. Okay. Okay. And then she's born beauty, right? Mm -hmm. In there. So she's. Uh, okay. So what, really, what we're going to do today, or really kind of set the stage a little bit, I have looked at some of your financials. Are all of them up to date, or am I just missing? Because there are some that didn't have numbers in them. I thought. But I would think ahead of time. If not, we can kind of look at them as the class goes along. And you have numbers in. Yep. I did it by date, so I did the most recent date. Okay. I thought. So those, I think, for the most part, were the ones where I was probably the most concerned about that. But that's okay. And we'll talk about different things if you don't mind. But, okay. So we're here to kind of update and just really optimize those things, right? Because again, you've got that exciting story when you first start, you just gotta keep the excitement going. You gotta keep their attention through the whole MVP, MVP pitch, okay? And you're dealing, you know, like Mr. Stone said, you're dealing with people that are used to dealing and looking at numbers. They wanna know the bottom line. They don't probably have a lot of time to be there in the first place, more than likely. Hopefully they don't. Maybe they do. If they do, maybe you don't want their money. That's a whole other discussion. But, they're going to be, be very quick. They're going to boom, 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 boom. But you've got to paint a picture financially as well as to kind of what it looks like, or maybe what options there are as well from that standpoint. Um, projected growth rates, and we'll talk about that in two and three. You're going to want to assess those models, uh, making sure that the business is financially built to not only you know, get to the year three. Um, we've talked about this actually when the, the first year that we did it, um, I don't even know if Maddie still works on it. Maybe she does. I don't know. But there's a particular project where um, she was making something that really, I, I looked at her and said, okay, after three or four years, do you have an exit strategy? Well, what do you mean? Maybe, maybe somebody wants to buy this. Well, I never thought of that. Right? So you have to kind of sit down and think about it too. Like, okay, not only how does this thing start, but once you get to year three, four, five, whatever, I know it's only three here, but... You kind of have to figure out, okay, how's this end as well? Because you want to know what's going to go happen um, ahead of time. Some of those numbers will help you with that, okay? 
Um, we're going to analyze those data, the data, and validate them, essentially. And then, obviously, define the next steps. Again, pivot or persevere. That's kind of what I'm talking about here. Pivot, maybe, hey, maybe we're changing it. Maybe this isn't going to work, and then we're too deep into it probably at this point. But, or, you know, hey, I think maybe if I tweak this just a little bit, then I think it'll be a little bit better. Okay? Does anyone have any questions, I guess, before we get started, as far as, like, what the numbers mean and cost of goods and all that? Well, are we able to ask uh, more personal questions when you look at our, at our financial models? So. Sure. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of open, so. Um, and then how we kind of discuss things along the way is fine, too, so. All right, so the point of financial projections is to really help tell a story with your numbers. And we talked about this as well. A story about opportunity, the resource requirements, that's really what they want to know. How much money do you need for me and for how long? Okay? I mean, this is the fluffy part, but cut to the chase, right? What do you, what do you need? And so, and then market forces, who else is out there? What else is available? Did you know that this was available? Um, that kind of stuff. What kind of growth is available? Milestone achievements, profits. Your job is to create a numerical frame, framework that complements and reinforces the vision that you painted with your words. Again, with that first excitement. Hey, I'm going to do this, right? Oh, that sounds great. Da, 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 da. And then they're like, okay, what comes next? Okay, how's this? How's this really going to work? That excitement has to stay through. Um, we had a lot of discussions with. with um, so I don't think any of my kids have had you. No. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're all they're either, either sciency or just not sure. You may end up with the last one. Yeah, we'll see. But um, very sciency, so very specific. Things have an answer. Okay. In a lot of my kids' worlds, which I will debate that how they tell the damn dad. So. But when COVID happened, uh, the oldest in particular was like, well, dad, boom, 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 boom. You know, and I, and I, basically I came down to, okay, so what you're telling me is numbers don't lie. She's like, no, they don't. Okay. I said, they may not lie, but how we present them to a client certainly can skew things. Huh. Never thought of it that way. But you can, we can have the same numbers and I can tell a much different story than what she could, you know, from that standpoint. And I think that's the point of what you're trying to do with these numbers, and it's not that you're trying to massage it on the, on, on the actual uh, statements, but you're trying to pick out the things you want to talk about and you think are important. They might put, you know, poke holes in it when they're looking at investing, but you have to have an answer for it, and that's all part of the story. Okay, does that make sense? Um, Let's kind of review stuff. So we've got the income statement. Everyone kind of remembers all this, right? So we got our we got our sales. How much is going to be coming in? How much does it cost us to make it? Okay. Gross profit, and then our operating expenses. Not only the cost of goods, but I probably got to advertise. He talked about you know Facebook posts and and followers and all that stuff. But sometimes, well, we're talking about doing. Um, Right now, the credit union, I'm, 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 I'm actually a CUNA employee, but I work at the Cobra Credit Union. So they're going through a conversion of their software. It's a big deal. Every 10, 12, 15 years, they go ahead and they try to do that, um, or they have to do that because they have to keep up with their technology. So they're going to be kind of slow for us, meaning that we get referrals from the credit union. So I said, well, can we do some marketing? Can we do some stuff? Well, so they're going to do billboards as an example, I think, We're talking about it and doing some other advertising, that all costs money, okay? Now, it's not just free, setting it out on Facebook, setting it out on LinkedIn, sending it out, sending it out, sending it out, or just being on a website. They want to do some additional stuff. So some of those selling expenses are going to be in there, um, especially when you're first starting, you got to get your hand off, right? So you gotta, they got to know you're there. And then administrative expenses. This is one area that I saw, at least on the financials I saw, was 
There wasn't, a, I didn't think there was enough in there. Not only that, there wasn't like salaries and, and that kind of stuff. And that's why I was wondering like, okay. And that's okay if you want to work for free for the first year or two. Not a problem, right? You're, you're betting on the come, as they would say, right? You're, you're like, okay, I'll put in the work now, knowing that in year three, I'm gonna sell it to blah, 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 and, you know, or um, I need that. But if you need something to live along the way, maybe you're gonna just do the project on the side, but if it's gonna be your full-time job, you probably need something, some kind of income, or at least savings to be able to fall back on. And then any kind of non-operating uh, um, expenses, revenues that, you know, gain on sales, interest expenses, all that kind of stuff as well. To make sure that this number at the end, this net income, is a positive number, right? We don't want that to be a negative number, or at least not for long. Odds are the first year, it probably will be negative. Right? There's a lot of startup. You know, it, it, like I said, I did a lot on the, the, uh, the baking, or looked at it quite often. Um, obviously, there's a lot of cost up front, right? So, whereas something like, you know, their project maybe doesn't have a lot up front, maybe a lot of time, okay? You gotta be willing to do a lot of stuff for free initially, or they might have to pay somebody to develop something, right? And that's a little different for Jacob, too. So, He's got to be able to develop the technology and make sure it works, right? Or find somebody who can. Okay? Just make sure that's all built into that because you don't want to be able to come back to the person and say, well, I thought I could do this, but I can't. I have to, I have to hire somebody else. Or I have to, even just on a consulting basis, well, that's going to be another ten or $15,000 or 20000 or 30000 Or um, your bakers, okay? You had one baker initially, right? I think thirty-five thousand. Is that enough money to be a baker? Is that growing rate? Is my only question? Uh, I think it's what we did was just like twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Did you did you ask around? I mean, you know, any other places? Any other like? Uh, and again, you could probably go on the internet as well, but did you check out Kohler? Did you check out um, Stefano's? He also has his own baker, right? He's got Bristol Global Market. He's got his own baking system. Um, any of the other bakeries around town? High Low? Um, uh, I didn't really check out Fuzzy's, Johnston's. I did more of like what I was okay with working That was going to be the next question. Would you, would you be okay with making $35,000? Yeah, because it was. And are you the baker? Yeah, it was going to be initially. Okay. Sure. Okay. So it's that kind of stuff. I think that's important to think it through. Like, okay, that's the number, but okay, does that work? Does that does that work? You know, are you going to have health insurance? Are you going to, you know, and maybe it's a situation where like, ah, no, <laughs> or I do need health insurance. Hey, it's a couple thousand dollars a month. You just got to kind of build that into your plan. So, from that does anyone have any? You guys have gone through this. Yes. Oh, I mean the, the actual income statement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like they've seen the they we've done the like done the three year summary and kind of blocked how that is put together. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on it? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm sorry. That's your word. Because that this tells a story as well. You know, right away when you look at it, not just whether or not this is a positive or negative number here, but it still tells a number throughout. How do you best want to tell a story through that? What would be the focal point to the income statement? Well, I think there's a few things you want to look at. Um, because they'll look at too is, okay, well, so there's a few few areas. So the first part is sales. How'd you come up with the number, right? Or what is that, how does that, how, how do you, how are you going to get that number to get the 100,000? Cost of goods, where is it coming from? So you can almost line by line by line, then you pick the story from there. So think of it this way, you could almost go um, and make a rough draft of this line is this, this line is this, this line is this, is why I kind of look at it. Can you buy it for cheaper? Right, it might be the first, well first one is can you sell that many units? Is that physically possible? You know, like with the baking, can you bake that many things that you're talking about? Physically. I don't know the answer to it. I just want to invest. But you're telling me you can do it, then great, let's do it. 
Okay? But if you can't, then that number needs to change, right? Or can you get it for cheaper? Even if it's from 75,000 to 70,000, that makes that number a lot prettier on the bottom, right? Are you okay buying it from the other person? Sometimes there's times in business, their clients I do not want to work with. And I tell them that. When you think that as a financial advisor, they'll just they just walk in and be like, okay, great, I'm gonna I choose you. Well, wait a minute, I gotta choose you too. And because I've been doing it as long as I have, I can do some of that now. Or there's some personalities I just don't work with. And it just is again, sometimes it's not gonna happen. Or I deal with I deal more with one spouse versus the other one, because the other one drives me nuts. <laughs> Honestly. You know, or you know, for me it's finding out who holds the checkbook. Who do I, not that who do I have to be nicer to, but who's really the decision maker, okay? So, cost of goods, can you get it any cheaper? Because that's always gonna be, that's always gonna be a question. And if so, from where? And do they have it all the time available for you, right? So that gross profit number can really, that already in itself can be one paragraph or one, one part of the story, okay? Operating expenses, some of these, you know, the problem with some of these is some of these are somewhat objective, right? Advertising expense, well, do I really need to do all that? Can't I do it on Facebook? Can't I do it on here? Can't, and I, I know you have to pay Google Ads, right? So, quick story on that, Google Ads. Um, not that I'm not fond of them, maybe I just don't understand it as much, right? So, um, a big part of our, uh, I said our budget, you know, it'll work there, but part of the budget for for our advertising and our marketing is Google Ads. And it's half. And I'm like, why are we doing these? Like, why does it make, well, you know, you have this many hits, and da 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 da. Okay, but can you tell me how, how does it come to my bottom line, right? How did it affect here? How did it affect my sales? Well, you had this many clicks. Okay, I get that. I get clicks, okay? But how many of them actually said, hey guys, I want to work with you or I want to at least meet with you? It's all I'm looking for is an opportunity, right? Yeah, we talk about that, and we've talked about that with the MVP. Like, followers is great, but mm -hmm. followers doesn't necessarily equal sales. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the pedal, like the pedal pump, you know, we, we, we are just about to scrape up against 900 followers. Yeah. Since, yeah, I mean, I can tell you I didn't book 900 seats. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, think of it yourself. How many times do you like a page on, well, no, Insta, right? I can't say a page on that's what people like so, on Insta, how many times do you click on something just because you think it's cool? Okay? How many of them buy, right? But do you buy anything from them? Um, no. Probably not, right? Or what I'll do is I'll screenshot and be sent it to my wife. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Find it somewhere else. Find it on Amazon. Find it on, find it at Costco. Find it at wherever, right? I don't really buy it from, from them. Or she'll just get a gist of what the product is. And then next day, you know, I have a, like, there was a shirt. We're going to, we're going to Cabo. That's why I'm out the week he wanted to do this. And so I'm like, oh, that's a really cool shirt. So I take a screenshot of it, send it to Brenda. Three days later, I have a shirt sitting on my bed. Hey, can you try it on? Make sure, make sure it fits. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, did she buy it from that website? Probably not. Okay. Probably not from that person. So advertising is a big part of that. Commissions, right? Am I paying somebody to sell my product? And so how much? Is that adjustable, <laughs> right? So there's a lot of that kind of stuff where, can I find somebody to do it for 4,000 <laughs> instead of 5,000? Are they good? <laughs> Is that person worth the $5,000? Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a lot of different things just within here <coughs> that you can kind of look at. off expenses. Do I need, uh, I know I need a computer. Do I need two computers? Do I need a supercomputer? Do I need, Right? So there's a lot of things in there. Uh, that's the equipment. Supplies, that, well, that seems pretty high as well, 3500 bucks. Or supplies, right? I'm thinking paper, staplers, that kind of thing. When I think of office equipment, I guess I think of computers and furniture, that kind of stuff. I would almost honestly, I probably would think those numbers are good. But do you need an office? So there, there's stuff that you kind of look at this and go, well, Obviously, it doesn't apply to everybody, but as you kind of look at up and down there, you can, when you're looking at cost cutting or looking at telling that story, you know, hey, Mr. Mr. Investment, uh, 
person, you know, we've talked about whether or not what kind of supplies and expenses we needed. And we think based on, you know, we want to have, you know, a table like this so we can we can all talk about it. It's a real creative process and it's really uh, it's a better fit for us because of that, rather than having something like that. Each of us have our own station, right? We're all just kind of kind of working our pods. No one really talks to one another. We really need this creative thing. Yeah, I know this this costs uh, fifteen hundred bucks. This is going to cost two grand, but I think it's worth it. And here and here's some of the things we've gotten from it. You know, Tyler had this great idea the other day. We were talking about it at the table, and and right versus Tyler's just sort of working at his workstation, and maybe says something over you know, oh, we shouldn't even think about doing that. I mean, it's just not as efficient, right? And so, there's different things that you can kind of, it helps you kind of set up your business too, just by kind of looking at it that way. And then, some of this isn't quite, you know, like in this case, gain on, on the sale of investments. I'm not even sure what that means as far as this type of product company, but um, interest revenues, um, interest expense, some, some of that you can't uh, deal with. Interest rates have been going up. So some of those, some of the income flows would be higher, but your loan rate might be lower as well, right? So you've got to kind of adjust that along the way. Um, loss from lawsuit. So, but again, ultimately that bottom line at some point needs to have a positive number, otherwise it's a hot one. So that and that's a lot of IRS fees in action. Once you start filing taxes, I forget how many years in a row you can have a negative number. Um, but after four or five, I think you have to show um, a gain, an actual income gain. Otherwise, it's a hobby. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a business. Okay. What's the? I know there's a clear difference, but what is the technical difference? Well, in the IRS case, it's like, look, you're not making any money, so what, what are you doing? I mean, the business is supposed to make money. Yeah, yeah I mean, the business is there to make money. So, you know, and a lot of times, the only reason I know the rule is um, my wife did Pamper Chef for 18 years. And at the time, I think it was, and you know, keep in mind, as a business owner, you want your taxes to be really close to zero, right? You don't want to be able to do that. And you've got, there are some benefits for you to be able to write off this and do that and all that. So there are some years you will have negative or really close to zero, if not zero income even though you made money, okay? But they don't want you to cheat either, so to speak, and always say, well, I lost money, so therefore I don't have to pay any taxes, even though you made money, you know? So that's really what they're trying to do. Um, and in her case, she just didn't have, she had enough sales and stuff, but there were other things and other expenses. She would, the catalog she had to buy, and blah, 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 right? So you've got all the sales, but some, sometimes you're, even though it was here, uh, expense-wise, Based on some other stuff, it ended up being just a slight loss, or you know, because she could write off her travel, she could write off, you know, gas mileage, you know, and all that. All of a sudden, you know, it just kind of just kind of keeps going up, right? So that's the difference in their, their definition. They just want to make sure that everyone's paying their quote unquote fair share. That's all. If you have a net loss, do you pay taxes? No, you would have a, in this case a net loss would. Um, would just make sure that this this particular uh, entity would not have to pay anything. Oh. Yeah. And even at eighteen thousand, you may not have to pay anything. It all just depends, and it also depends on how it's set up. Is it an LLC? Is it a C corp? S corps flow down all to the LLCs and S corps flow, as your accounting teacher would know, it all flows down to the bottom line. So may as, you may as well just be a sole proprietor. I mean, sent from a tax standpoint, right? Whereas a C-Corp is its own entity. So your C-Corp might not have to pay taxes, but from your salary and all that stuff that came from the C-Corp, you might have to pay personal taxes. Okay. <coughs> so as we talked about cost of goods sold, we've kind of talked about all these different things. So materials, labor, selling, you know, telephone, rent. You know, again, are you going to have a is the business run out of a home? Is it, um, do you want to rent a space? I was just telling uh, Mr. Stone about uh, Saturday mornings. I don't work at home, I just go to the office. I go to the office if I'm, if I'm busy enough, is how I look at it. So usually that's a good thing. If I'm working on a Saturday morning, it means I'm busy. 
but I can get more done in two to three hours in the office and come back home and have breakfast with everybody rather than sit at home and I just get too distracted and all that, right? So for me, in this case, they pay for my rent, but you guys would have your own rent. Right? Um, let's see, you guys have talked about all this stuff, right? Development costs, all that. So why don't we actually take a look at your numbers then? I don't know if you want me to just go to each of them and I mean, you can do it one of two ways. If you want to do some one-on-ones, you can do that. Otherwise, you can always have them come up to and present. And you can oh, go that's good. That. that sounds exciting. Right? All right. So who wants to go first? Uh, you want to just, uh, shut it down? Not here. I'll unplug it in a second. I'm going to plug it in there. I'm going to try my coffee. Those are good. I got you. I'm going to wait for you guys to present it from the TV set. No, you got to get That's right. store and on the Apple store, that's approximately $125 every year. I'm not too sure about the Play Store, but I know the Apple store is about $70. Um, so cheap. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you think about it? Our website, we checked GoDaddy, um, Google Domains, and what was the last one? Namecheap, I think it was. They all sit around 60 something dollars, so about $70. And as far as our accounting software and QuickBooks, um, we put, we got that from Mr. Stone. A relative, yeah, we put, yep. uh, I don't know what it's used for the purpose so. mm -hmm. And by far our biggest hurdle right now is the app development cost. Um, this number came from talking with our mentor as well as a lot of Google searches. Mm -hmm. And we came, this is not, this is the high end of the mm -hmm. spectrum, relative. So that's for a person to just develop. Yeah. That's for sure, or like a small team. Okay. Yeah, for us to hire somebody or some people. Okay. You want to add this one too? I'll go ahead. Uh, as far as our actual workspace and what we're going to be doing, our, uh, we were thinking laptops to start with. And I thought it said. Programming laptops, but um, those were those would be the kinds of laptops we would be buying because a lot of our app has a lot of programming structure that I'm going to be tinkering with as well. So I just don't want to get like a really really cheap laptop, you know. You don't think four hundred? I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch. It's four hundred dollars or really cheap. But to me, that seems like a cheap laptop. That's great. This isn't the updated one. Okay, and that's fine. That's that's why we're talking about it, right? No, so. like yesterday I made. Whole new financial model. Oh, and this is a, it just seems like a very inexpensive computer. Yeah. So I would expect it to be anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred for a decent computer. Mm -hmm. I'm not an IT guy either. That number sounds about right. <laughs> why is um, why is this not sheets? Because Mr. Stone went in a little bit ago and put the numbers in there. That's I, I forget why, Mr. Stone. Yeah, you, because all, like all of your cell references aren't working correctly, so that table under revenue model isn't working correctly. 
but you can like you can upload this in, and then there's an option to convert it over. And I think you'll be okay. It's just that the only thing I did transfer in was all the comments, like with your references. So you may may just want to make a note, like on the model right before this one, that this is where the last of your comments were. Okay. And what the number is is, is I mean, it is important, but it's, right now it's just about kind of okay. Where does how does this all flow? And you get the numbers right, and the numbers will change. I mean. I thought it was going to be sixteen hundred. Oh, you know what? Uh, it's going to be twenty five hundred dollars because we need to buy a lot, a lot, a lot, whatever, right? And so it's those numbers change and they move around. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the secure server. That was from a Google search. I want to research again, like you were saying. Research. Yeah, yeah, just research a little bit more and just be like, okay, well, from this one. So as for our prototype, right now we actually have a Google slide presentation which does a very basic job, but we want something a little bit more. Um, I looked online, there are some free versions, where they're kind of tacky, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I found some more premium versions and they, they do cost a few thousand dollars. Some of them are a few hundred, so that's a lot cheaper. I'll have to pick and choose which ones are better. But uh, we can actually create an interactive app on it, so we can, like for the slides, you would just scroll through the slides and it would just, well, it would roll through the different functions based on what I input in. They could just have free control. Okay. Last two expenses are for business cards. Um, where did you get this number from? Uh, so again, looking at this, you're not going to pay yourself anything. Not for a while. And that's okay. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Because for some people, it's like either A, it's just going to be a side job, and I have my other job, and I'm going to do blah, 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 and on the weekends and nights, I'm going to kind of crunch this and get this going, and once it's up and running, then I can start taking something from it, but that's all. As, a, as an investor, you're going to obviously be involved in it, but you're just not going to take any pay for it. Yeah. Okay. The plan, at least for me, is not to take any money until it's up and running, because it's nice, like it's not. We can take a look at the revenue because, like I said, it's fuzzy right now. So, website cost, that's wrong. It's going to be for the name. Wait, the name was what we got before, right? And then we paid yearly for the website to keep the website name. So if you're asking a question, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't look at your audience and be like, uh, that's what I mean, right? Like, we don't know. Okay. I'm sitting here with a checkbook. That's um, all I'm sitting with, right? I mean, essentially, right? Yes. You're you're asking me for money, and I'm you're like, uh, I'm not so sure. Right? So, so that just, number is, just that's part of your story. Yeah. That number is wrong. Be kind now. The twelve dollars a month is to actually have your web website running. The name itself is seventy dollars to buy. Okay. Half the name is what we were talking about before. <coughs> the API service, do you remember what that is? Uh, we have to, I have to re re new this one. Yep. Hosting it on the site, Apple Play and all that. Or yeah. Not Apple and Google Play. And I was looking at that, that same article last night. And I was looking at how you get an app actually on the App Store, and you pay a one-time fee, and if you sign up for a, a small business group, I forget what they're called, but you get to cheapen it out that first year, and then you get cheaper apps, or you, you don't pay as much for the app to continue. It's more inexpensive, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> Don't, don't say cheaper. 
Very expensive. Thank you. <laughs> cheaper, cheaper implies quality. Correct. Oh. And it's okay. an app, so that doesn't, but cheaper if I'm looking at a product, I'm thinking flimsy. That's all. Okay, thank you. That's all, that's all about words. This is where I was really wrong. Bug fixes will be about $1,000 a month, according to that website on the side. And then market relevance, to make, make sure that our app is updated and functional, okay. will be about $9,000. Again, heightened number. Mm -hmm. Social media ads, we got this from our market plan, which is what we want to do for the year. So if it's divided into 12, we can get $50 a month to have good ads that get our, get our business out there. <coughs> and then the thing that we also want to do is have stickers. If we go to conventions and we sell our product, we want to have a way to create a memory with that. So we want to have stickers of our of our logo to give to people so that they can put on Tyler's water bottle like that. Yep. Mr. Stone's doing that right now. And he said that that needs to be a way bigger amount. So <laughs> okay. we're gonna have we're gonna buy stickers two times a year. They're gonna be five hundred or more. And then it'll be about one hundred and eighty per sticker roll. And then, of course, we aren't going to do the, the salaries yet. And we need to think about how we, how we want to create further revenue. If we want to put ads on, on our app starting out so that we can rocket launch our way so that we don't have to do that later. So we don't have to do ads later. Yeah. So let's get back to the revenue side just in general, right? I don't necessarily need to look at numbers per se, but so if you click on the revenue then, are you looking at subscriptions or what, what am I doing when I buy the app? by the app? Am I just buying it and then I just use it? So initially, like I said, the performance said before rather, we're doing some reworking with that. Before, yeah. it was about $4.99 to buy the upfront app and you have access to everything except our AI system. And as for the AI system, that would be about $0.99 cents a month. Yeah. Um, we realized that there could be a huge pitfall for us because not everyone would purchase the AI system. Mm -hmm. So we want to find some other way to drive in the money. Mm -hmm. And we also, I did some research, again using that, that article, it was really informative actually, I recommend it. And like 95% of the apps on the App Store and Play Store are free. Mm -hmm. And people download those ones. And there are some advantages to having a paid app, but generally they're like $1.99. So we decided that we can Get our funds through subscriptions and in-app purchases. We'll make more money, and we won't have to pay App Store and Play Store as much, which I think is pretty cool. Yep. Pretty steep. So the four ninety nine, right? So the first month you're going to get twenty five people to pay you that, right? Okay. Yeah. And we have to research how many people will actually buy. Startup companies first or download the app and whatnot, and then. Basically, this number's inaccurate right now. But we're a step further to getting the answer. Yeah, yeah it's all about step, baby steps, right? What you got until the actual final pitch. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have to walk faster. <laughs> Mr. Stone put these numbers in there because he saw that that would help out. But some of these numbers to simulate how people will not always just keep the subscription. So we see a plane drop off in the game. Thank you, Mr. Stone. And we need to rework that. Good. Good. Did you want to see the three years somewhere? Just uh, go to the picture one. Yeah. Show sure, the graph. Yeah. Summer graph. So that always says a lot, right? Just there. Just a picture of it. Right, we know that zero revenue in the first year, no profit, which I'm fine. You know, as an investor, I'm like, okay, I get that. Right? We got a lot. We got. A, I'm writing the check. That's going to be there. The year two, all right, we made 7,500 bucks. You know, or the net income was 7,500 bucks, and then 14,000 the next year. Right? So, 
And then once you start looking at it and, and going through that, then I'm going to have to ask you, was that enough as an investor for me to be like, okay, I'm going to be willing to do that. So as long as you can back up your revenue numbers, so that, I mean, that picture says a lot. Yeah. Knowing that it's, it costs fifty three thousand, but again, keep in mind. So let's just say you don't put any money into it. You're going to have fifty three thousand to start with. We'll just say I'm going to write that check. Net income after three years is going to be a total of what twenty one thousand? Yeah, oh, less, less than that. Eleven, because I lost nine the first year. Is in over three years is that enough of return for me? And in this case, it'd be no. Correct. Good thing to know. Yep. You you unless I knew you and really, you know what I mean? Or really, or really believed in the story. Which is something we can Yep. You want to see this, these ones too? No, I think we're good. I want to see some other, yeah, I feel like we've got about five more minutes left, so. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> but that's fine. If we can, I mean, I'm here three days, so we can do, maybe in, uh, Monday we'll do the other. Maybe I'll take a shake at the next five minutes, or, or no? Take a shake of, I don't know. So here's, here's what I think you guys should do, okay? Um, we can certainly look at the models themselves, uh, but you're never going to present like this at Final Finish. This is, this is way too much of explaining how the soup is made versus letting you try it. Um, if we can try to take some time over the weekend to start putting together your financial model slides, learning what you learned today as far as how you really need to maybe revise the way you presented it the last time, or you guys pretty much the first time you just walked up here and recited numbers that you saw up here, you know, can you can you go back to those slides, maybe do some tweaking to what you have on those slides, and then start thinking about what you would share, you know? So you can be a trip over it a little bit. But that, that's what you're what we're trying to do. Is just help you guys work your way through it. And then if we do have some questions about actual models themselves, we're all in the right, we're all in the right folder, right? Like we all have our most recent one in there. Right? I said you could you can take a look at them and you like I said you if you see any individual nuggets on it, we can maybe do some one-on-ones. Yeah, because when you present, I think the three-page summary is what I would probably present, honestly. Yeah. And then if somebody wants to have the backup information, all right, let me go to the revenue page. Let me go to the cost of goods page. Because the story is going to be on the three-year the three summary. Okay. Right. I mean, ultimately what most... That's the story. I ultimately what most of them did when they when they do get the final pitches and they know that most of the questions come to come about numbers and you guys saw that already once. Um, you know, they had how they presented it and then they had a Chromebook off on the corner with the actual spreadsheet there. Okay? So if somebody did ask a more detailed question and they didn't know the answer off the top of their head, they could just quickly go to the model. They should have, they know exactly where to find that, that piece of information. And then they could they could give more detail, okay. And there's nothing wrong, by the way, as well. And I watched you guys kind of go through that. If one of you has spent more time in the financial model, you feel more comfortable to do the presenting. There's nothing wrong with one person just driving that ship 100%. Uh, there's nothing. There's no issues with that at all, okay. Um, just understand though that when it gets to questions about the financial model, you both have to feel comfortable enough to be able to answer questions about it. Does that make sense? So like, it can't be a situation where, you know, Corbin puts everything in the model, he's the one who presents about the model, meanwhile Tyler doesn't know anything about the numbers, because he just made that his department. You want to make sure that you both still have an understanding of the numbers well enough that you can, you know, answer questions and it doesn't end up just being the one person to show up there every time it's about numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. But can we, can we make that the game plan? Yeah, we'll look at just presenting that on Monday. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just learn how to present your three-year summary. Yeah. And like I said, we can kind of use that time to do a little bit of a critique, and then if we've got some, want to take some time towards the back end of the of the, the last day or whatever else, we can maybe get into some one-on-one -on -one sit downs, and we can talk about some of the things that maybe are still behind the scenes on the spreadsheets. Yeah. Sound good? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank cool. You.
Mr. Stone, how do you put this file in 